Hello, everybody, and welcome back to MJ Games. I am Michael, and today I am joined by none other than the absolute best Planko Spotlighter that has ever, ever walked this planet, and that is Iron Matty. How are you doing, buddy? <laughs> Hello, Michael. Thank you for having me along. You flatter me too much, honestly. Uh, I think you're taking away a little bit from yourself as well, and, and Tommy as well. Um, I, th I think collectively between us we make a good team. But th uh, hello, Michael. Thank you ever so much for having me. You all right? <laughs> yeah, I'm doing good, man. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing really well. I, I see that we are back at Explorerland once again. Yes. So we're in, this is Explore Land France, and this is created by Now Then Fella. And the reason why I'm having Iron Maddie join me on this tour is Maddie has joined me for the other two tours of the parks that are created by the same creator. And so just as we kind of do some quick, short overviews, kind of what, what's your kind of initial thought um, before we get started with the park? I mean, once again, just as the same with the other two, it's a very big park, once again, isn't it? Now then, Fella really doesn't skimp on the size of parks, does he? And oh, you can no. really tell it's his park as well. Even from an overview, I can tell it's his park. Mm -hmm. He's got a very... It's funny when you see certain creators, you can see some of their builds, and you know it's them. And I can tell that it's his park just from the overview. Yeah, looking fantastic. If it's anything like the other two, I'm really excited to get into it. Absolutely, and I'll read the description real quick as it says, Welcome to Explorerland France. It's the third park in the series. Take a trip into Expedition Africa um, and ride the RMC coaster. Then explore the German Alps. Um where a couple rides await. Lastly, take a trip to the near future at New Horizons, where you can take a flight on the Project um, Ion before uh, settle. Well, I can't speak today. Before stealing yourself a ride on Dark Matter. So I'm trying to read this while manning the controls here. <laughs> um, so basically, then talks about the ride there, and um, there are a few workshop creations used. And by brush and rocks, or brush and rocks by David seven eight um, nine zero zero Z, um, and then you know just kind of giving a couple shout outs to a couple creators who made it. He got a couple things off the workshop from, so uh, make sure to go check those out on the channel as well. And let's go ahead and get started down here at the entrance, shall we, Maddie? Yep, let's do it. So we're here at the entrance, and right away. You know, I know he's used this in other parks, but I love the foliage around here. You've got the archways, you got the um, vintage fencing on the side. Like this is just a really cool look, and the butterflies and stuff. So, what are your yeah, thoughts of this the, main um, entrance area? Of it. Mm -hmm. I love the color and the vibrancy, and it's all kind of like very symmetrical as well. Yeah, it's just beautiful. So scenic. Yeah. Agreed. And I think this entrance, because you'd mentioned this to me as well, I think this entrance is either a blueprint or one of the ones that's off the workshop. Because I know both of us have looked at parks before that have had this in um, this entrance building in it. But I, I do like yeah. that building a lot. It is a really nice entranceway, and I've seen it in two or three parks now. Oh. Yeah, it's great. What a sight line that is. Mm -hmm. Wow. How about that building right there? Right as you walk in, that's the focal, that a focal point. Amazing. That is awesome. I don't know about you, but I'm just just awful at making round buildings because I don't even know where to begin with them. But this yeah. this main walkway is just awesome. It looks fantastic. Again, just really immersive. I am noticing some in-game workshop items and maybe some uh, workshop items, but they've been implemented really well. And mm -hmm. as we said, I believe it was in the last video, I think, when we did Now Then Fellas Last Park, we were mm -hmm. talking about the implementation of blueprints, and so long as you give credit where credit is due, and so long as they're done, like, kind of with respect, yep. I don't see the harm in it, and, and this just looks fantastic. It really Yeah, does. it really does. Maybe the only thing I'd suggest, and this is just a personal preference, this planter in the middle, I would like it to be raised down about halfway. Because it's just so high up that I feel like if you raise it down, it would give you the illusion that that guest could take a seat on it, and you can kind of see from one side of the the walkway to the other. But I just feel like that's just a tad bit too high. Um, no, do you I agree mean, or disagree totally with me agree. on that? No, totally okay. agree. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, but I mean, I love the like you said. Even if some of these are from the workshop, it's it's put in, it's implemented really well in the park. Um, so let's uh, 
I guess we're going left because we always go left, right? Yeah, always. Left never fails. So what is this? Is this supposed to be an A? Is that supposed to be like an A or? Maybe it's just just some kind of design. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be anything in particular. It just it just looks really nice. Oh, as we got some over here. Okay, so each section has that kind of um, that little design on the floor. That's really cool. I like that. Yeah, I like something that. different. And one thing now then fellow, which is such a great name. Um, one thing he does that's just so well is doing the foliage design and stuff. So Expedition Africa. I've always been impressed, well, certainly with the last two parks as well. It's how he's able to segregate the areas as well and mm -hmm. make each area feel unique. And But I will go back to a point that you actually alluded to in Explorerland Spain was the last one? Yes. Spain, where you said um, maybe the names are a little bit deceiving because mm -hmm. obviously we're in Explorerland Africa now. This isn't France. So maybe the names are a little bit off potentially. It's a little bit deceiving in the names, but it, it doesn't matter. The, it, we're just getting into kind of like technicalities now with the name. Right. Now, but it doesn't take away from the park. It's just a little bit confusing with the name is all. Yes. I just, I just can't stop zooming in on the sidelines of these coasters. Like as we watch this one go up the lift hill for Stampede, I mean, just that view right there is just spectacular. Yeah. Yeah. Really nice view, viewpoint. I can't believe he knocks these parks out so quick as well, you know. I know. I, I was thinking that too. I feel like it was just a month ago that we were looking at Explorer Land Spain, and it was probably it was definitely more than that. But it feels like it wasn't that long ago. Yeah, it doesn't and feel long ago at all. I love this queue, and I love the use of these kind of sail canopies. Um, I think they fit really well with this style. Yeah, I've tried to use them a couple of times before, and never really been able to implement them that well. They've just not really worked for me. But the mm -hmm. way that he's done them here is, is really good. And I like the fact that you can see the coaster as you're coming down the queue path as well. And the coaster's all around you on multiple sides. Just lots yep. of differing sight lines as you come up the queue. Totally agree. And so basically what we're going to do is we're going to be in flip cam mode going from one coaster to the next. And then afterwards we'll kind of get an overview shot. Um, so here as we see the station, I definitely like it. I, I like the cross beams here. I think there's enough supports and it's a really, really cool design. I like the lights mm -hmm. just being um, sunk up into the wood. Yeah. I just like that. It's a nice little effect. It looks like recess lighting, essentially. Yeah. Um, you know, it doesn't really give off too much light, but then you can hide the area lights underneath the floor to make it look like it gives off more light. Um, but yeah, so let's go ahead and take a ride on the coaster. So that was Stampede, and Maddie, I'll come to you uh, first on this one. What are your thoughts? I think that was absolutely fantastic. Really appropriately named ride as well with mm -hmm. Stampede. It, it kind of, this is going to sound really bizarre, 
but it kind of made me think of the Lion King wildebeest scene. Yep. D- does that yep. make sense? Like kind of like yeah. the up and down and the and the chaosness, like the chaoticness of it, and it just felt very Serengeti and African themed. And yeah, I mean for what it's supposed to be and the theming that it's supposed to have and the name that it's got, I think it was brilliant. And the ride itself, yeah, top work, super smooth, great moments of airtime, brilliant, good job. Yeah, I agree. I think the it really stayed low to the ground too. So that's to me what really kept the kept the name Stampede was everything is is pretty low and shallow to the ground. Um, so I really really liked it. I think the the first hill is really nice because that really looks like an RMC first hill um, where you have a really steep moment at the top and then it gradually kind of flattens out. Um, from a technical standpoint, this is a the only thing is, this is something we don't we don't see on RMC coasters really. I mean, it's like it's that tide of a wave turn essentially. Um, but that's just me being technical with it because I absolutely love this coaster. I think it's phenomenal. Um, like you said, the airtime, the inversions, um, as it kind of. It was funny you mentioned the Lion King scene because I was thinking about that too. <laughs> Um, you think of Stampede, you think Lion King, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. Well, and then I love the love the sign, too. Just looks so good. Um, so let's get back in plip cam mode with this person that looks like they're about to pee their pants. Um, so now we are heading to this coaster area. And I almost, always feel like in the parks that we've looked at, the African themed areas that um, now then fella makes are kind of my favorites because I feel like there's been a African or like a Middle Eastern theme in like every single park, you know, and they always just seem to be done so well. See now for me, the Middle Eastern theme is is my favorite. The um, certainly the Asian themed area uh, okay. done in the, the Explorerland Spain. I mean that was just pucker i can't believe you just walked past that water feature and didn't look at it more i mean come on dude Literally, yeah you're right oh, you're like right water feature oh there we go i'm yeah. happy now that's it you can move on now <laughs> i just needed i just needed that moment just needed that quick second thing i'm happy i love this little food food covering that looks like the type of thing that jasmine would do mm-hmm like it's so it's you know maybe it's just a tad bit tall but it's just it's it's simple it's not overdone, but yet it just looks so nice in this area. I bet that's only about 20, 30 pieces as well that has, has done that. And yet, Yeah, it's not bad. Like you said, it's just fantastically done. It's unique and original. And I love the name. Coming over. Yeah. Safari Bites. And then this is Roar. So I like how there's some interaction there with the coaster and the path. And then obviously the queue coverings here are nice as well. You know, some pieces I've started using as whether it's cue covering or kind of protection from a coaster is using those scaffolding wooden pieces because oh, yeah. they're not because they're not thick like these these pieces are. Um, so they're a lot easier to cover up with like a one of the smaller beams and stuff like that. Um, oh, this is a cool station. That's well, kind of cool. To the other one. Mm-hmm. It's similar, but it's still different enough. Um, yeah, just about. Yeah. I like so how, now, as, as a guest, you could look up from the station through the gap and you'd be able to see the coaster at various different places as well. Yeah, that is pretty cool to kind of see that. Oh, and then you turn around, you can see there. That's, oh, wow, I'm all over the place now. But yeah, that's a pretty, <laughs> pretty, cool, pretty cool thing with this station. So let's go ahead and take a ride on the coaster.
So we just got off of Roar, and I thought that was really, really well done. Because sometimes you see these coaster types that essentially just kind of have this drop and go back in the station. Um, but there's, you know, kind of an extended part to it, but it's not an overly long coaster, if that makes sense. Um, and obviously it interacts well with the path, and I love this fencing right here. So what are your, what are your thoughts on this, Matty? Um, I think that was really good. I'm not going to lie. It's one of the coasters that I have probably ridden the least in spotlights that I've done. Mm -hmm. Because I think they are, I think the way that they go up and drop that initial first bit is quite off putting to a lot of people. So yeah. the ones that I have been on tend to be very good. But I would say that's probably one of the best ones because I thought it was really well executed. I like the like what you were just saying the footprint of the whole thing and the way that the cue path and the exit path is interacting with it i think it was mm -hmm. done really well and just again really nicely well themed yeah great job yeah i totally agree and then as we kind of do an overview of the area before we hop back in flip cam mode you know good job with placing a couple flat rides here um it looks like three and so maybe it's kind of following some of the nerd chacho thought of having two to three flat rides with each kind of main ride. We actually have four in here, so there's a lot of rides fit in this park, which is pretty impressive that it was done on the, you know, being able to fit all this on the PS5. So I, I really love the layout, if you kind of look at the pathing and everything. Really well I mean, done. that's one thing that Now Then Fella has done in all three of his parks as well, is he's always used the 10 meter wide path, which mm -hmm. for me is amazing. I love the 10 meter wide path. And I think people need to as well realize that don't be scared to use a 10 meter wide path. Yep. Don't think because it's 10 meter wide, it takes up more percentage. It doesn't. It takes up less percentage than a four meter. I think a lot of people will use the four meter wide path only because they assume that the bigger the path, the bigger the percentage. That is not the case. It's the exact opposite. So yeah, the fact, I think that's how Now Then Fellow is able to get so much in his parks because they're always big. It's because he right. uses the 10 meter wide path everywhere. Yeah, well, and I know you've done a video on this too, because I like doing the 10 meter wide path as well, but it's not just yeah. having it the 10 meter path, it's placing it on a grid. Yeah. Um, and so all those little things, so like for me, I really try as hard as possible to get a lot of my cues on grids. So they're maybe not the most interesting, but it saves a lot of percentage. I also do four meter paths on grids because having a four meter compared to three meter is a big, um, you know, really helps as well. But oh, that is a cool look for that Raptor ride. Yeah, really wow. Is. Just the sight lines in this park are some of the best I've seen. This is amazing. Um, any final thoughts in this area before we head on to no, the next part? No, I don't think so. No, I think, again, just I expect nothing less from him, to be honest. I, I always expect good things from now then, fellow. And once again, he's delivered. So, yeah, I'm not leaving disappointed. Mm -hmm. Good job. Yep. Now, I know, <laughs> as we head into this next area, I got to mention this because I just think of this every time. I know I mentioned it on the last video and you said you haven't, but for anybody who's seen Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, um, it's a movie made in the 1980s with Steve Martin and John Candy. And there's this guy who, this really country, country guy who says, you're a shower curtain ring fella. And so now whenever I hear now then fella or see that name, <laughs> I just think of, think of that line. So... <laughs> Hopefully some people know that movie and, and can uh, recognize that too. But now we've got Colo uh, Cobalt. 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 Uh, Cobalt. <laughs> Gosh, I'm yeah, so Cobalt. bad at pronouncing names. <laughs> oh. I love this little cue path. Yeah, this is Once great. Again, like, kind of really interactive with the ride again. The way that it comes underneath that bit of track there. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really good job. And like... One thing, too, that I'll kind of point out at the end is the layout of coasters in this park is really, really well done. Because this is kind of a more smaller, compact coaster, so it's actually in the middle of kind of the area. Unlike the other two coasters we just went on that were on the outskirts of the area. Oh, wow, that is a fantastic shot as we see the coaster about to fly by. That is really cool. And I like the coloring, too. You yeah, normally don't same. see these two colors put together. Wow, that's really cool. Um, this is one of my favorite rides in the game. Yeah, the bar heist. Mm -hmm. And mm. I think some of the best rides that I've ever been on in Spotlights have been this ride as well. Yeah, totally agree. Um, 
So yeah, one one suggestion I have for this station, I want to get your thoughts on it, is adding some cross beams. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. have to be anything too crazy, just taking either the thick wooden beams or this the haunted house beams and add some cross beams. Also, I wanted to show this real quick before um let's see. Um because I know there's certain lights that I've started using in the stations that really, really add good lighting. Um, where are they at? So sometimes I always forget where they're placed at. Let's see. And now when I'm on the spot, I can't find them. There we go. That one right there. And so, for instance, if we look at it at night, these lights, these like firehouse lights, really give off good lighting. And so I've started placing these in the station where you just kind of have them up high, but they, they give off a lot more light than some of the other ones. Yeah, and it really doesn't look tell a difference. Mm -hmm, and it doesn't look that much different. So like you take that off, I mean just look how much that adds. Just just That's having crazy. one of those. So it's like they're really, really good for your stations because they're not overly big, so it doesn't look that much different than the box light, but it's just a lot more effective um, to, uh, in terms of actually lighting up the, the station. So let's look at the stats real quick, which I forgot to look at on some of the other coasters. Um, G-forces look good. Max speed, 58 miles per hour. Biggest drop, where was that at? Number of inversions, five. Um, biggest drop, 115 feet. So we'll see you after the coaster. All right, so before we talk about this coaster, one thing that Maddie mentioned to me as we started looking at this is look at the view as you're heading out this way. I mean, the sight lines, seeing those other two coasters is just, just amazing. And I think my favorite part about this is the interaction with the building and the queue. But then I think this element right here, which is looks to be custom, or at least this initial portion is custom, was really, really well done. Um, so what are your thoughts, Matty? Um, for me, that was my favourite ride of the park so mm -hmm. far. And not because it goes over a water feature. <laughs> Before you say anything, it's like, oh, it goes over a water feature, that's why Matty likes it so much. No, I just think the whole ride from start to finish was fantastic fantastic i love this bit where you are now just mm -hmm. that very slight tilted right what a unique little tilt on a ride it's not something you see very often you don't normally go anti like you don't go out tilting you would always tilt in so to tilt yeah. out i think was really unique and i think it worked it was tactful and then all of the foliage and the rock work around this ride is just mwah, chef's kiss love it <laughs> fantastic Great ride, great footprint, loved it. Yeah, yeah totally agree. Um, I think the only thing I might like to see a little bit more, just from a, a realism standpoint, is a little bit higher of a fence. And it doesn't have to be anything crazy, but it could even be just taking that chain link fence and kind of setting it about halfway this way, kind of going across. Because normally that's what you'll see at theme parks, is they might have a lower fence, but then a little bit further back, they'll have the chain link fence to prevent people from actually jumping onto the ride area. Um, but I just, I just love the location of this as it is. It looks great. It's, it's just fantastic. One thing though, what I might like to see in Explorer okay. land Four 
is maybe a little bit more realism maybe mm -hmm. a little bit more with transfer tracks and things yeah. like that because as amazing as this is and it is fantastic don't get me wrong but even from the overview i could tell that it was his park and I've almost given that as a critique to other creators in the past. Like, kind of, yes, it's an amazing park. Yes, I like it. But I want you to step outside your comfort zone. I want to see something new. I want to see something different. And that's what I want to see in Explorerland 4. I don't want to mm -hmm. see a similar-ish style. I want to go out of his comfort zone and go for maybe for some different things. So not a critique of the park, but maybe just a little bit of a challenge, so to speak. Yeah, I can I can agree with that. Um, you I know, said I think that to you as well. To be fair, yeah, you have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you'll you'll probably say it after Spotlight and X Park too. Um, no, 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 no. Because <laughs> I think your new park is your most unique and original. To yeah. Be honest. Although and I think my your comfort zone. Yeah, I think my X Park will probably be probably similar to that one. So I still have some ideas of of borrowing from those um, Cedar Fair style right, parks, but um. Yeah, so taking a ride on this log flume now, I just, I love how secluded it is right here. Didn't we say the same for the uh, River Rapids in, in Explorerland Spain? We said it felt like it wasn't even in the park. It felt like it was completely detached from the rest of the park because it was so secluded and everything. Yes, I think so. Oh, and definitely the, there was River Rapids in... His first one, which I'm trying it to remember the name of it. Was um, it Germany? Yeah, Explorerland Germany. Yeah, the River Rapids was in kind of the, the African-themed area. That's what I'm And that thinking, was really yeah. good. Yeah, that's the one I'm thinking, sorry. Wow, th th that felt like the last one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then the views, and then right here you get to see a little bit of that wooden coaster. I love Man, this I... canopy over the top mm -hmm. with the um, concrete pillars. Yeah. Love and, that. And it's it's... You know, it's pretty basic too, and when I say basic, I don't mean bad. I just mean it's not utilize it's not using a lot of pieces. Like it's just taking the roof pieces and then using some wooden trim kind of to outline it. I love his rock work. Mm -hmm. Foliage work. And the it's mixing of the rocks. Yeah. It's just is is so good at it. It's like kind of and you've got obviously different rock textures in this part of the park compared to where we were in the African part as well. Yeah, and I love how there's a splash pad here. Is that just like still water or what I think is that's just part of the normal log flume, I think. Okay. Yeah, it's something like that. It's just part of the log flume, yeah. I think that's a default thing. It's just put back oh, to the Oh yeah, side yeah. Of it. I gotcha. So yeah, so it's almost hidden. Okay, I was about to say, I was like, that is that looks different. Like how do you get the water to look like that? <laughs> yeah, I think it's because he's done it with the rocks. That makes sense. Um, and so we'll get back in plip cam mode kind of after this section because the wooden roller coaster is just right here. So, um, yeah, I mean, I agree with you with the rock work. I mean, the mixing of rock types, the changing. Like right here, you can see these look to be the same rocks or a couple of them, but they're just turned different ways. Like I kind of get in the habit of not turning them vertically, just more turning them horizontally. Um, yeah. You can tell the difference that it makes. And I love these kind of coverings here. He makes his queue line so interactive. Mm hmm. Oh, we got webs and. So it's supposed to be like a horror, horror wooden coaster. I think he has done a lot of his pathing on a grid, you know. Yeah, he has, right? You can definitely see that here. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's squared off. Mm hmm. For sure. What an amazing queue line that is. And really nice station as well. Mm -hmm. And once again, kind of, it looks similar to some of the other ones in terms of the, the, the idea behind it, but it's done in such a unique way, kind of having this, these openings here. Um, I just wish there's a little bit better view of that lift hill, but it is kind of cool seeing the coaster kind of rumble over the top there. So now this is called the Wild Hunt. And, oh, look at that, 7.31. You normally wow. don't see that. That's impressive. Yeah, um, good stuff. G-force is good. Laterals maybe a tad bit high, 110 feet, 59 miles per hour. So let's take a ride on the coaster.
Now, I don't know about you, Maddie, but I think that is my favorite ride of the park so far. Because that is phenomenal. And especially these tunnels. Like, these tunnels are so well done. They wow. are incredible. They are yeah. amazing. Um, I mean, it's it's a difficult one for me because um, I forget the name of the last ride. I'm sorry, the one that I said was my favorite ride of the park. Um, but this one, from an actual technical standpoint and from mm -hmm. its actual execution, is... Spot it, on. It's, yeah. Yeah, amazing. Just super smooth throughout start to finish not a single point did i think that requires tweaking i think it was nigh on as close to perfection as you can get yeah totally totally agree um i think it's a really good cci coaster um as we can kind of see the other areas at night real quick before i i always tend to forget the night aspect of it here's one thing i like and now i could just be i could be off on this but it looks like the coasters in this area are colored to be like a yellowish the coasters in this area are more of a white maybe or maybe a blue and these are green so it's almost like mm -hmm. each area kind of has a different um color scheme for the the coasters at night not the pathing just the coasters it makes sense yeah it would yeah. make sense especially kind of like because i believe the last area is like more the the sci-fi futuristic area so it would make sense for that to be white and mm -hmm. obviously the african area to be yellow and then this is like kind of a little bit more of like kind of the woody haunted kind of like kind of vibe so a little bit of green yeah. so yeah i love the little bits of red on this you know as it oh yeah for sure there seem to be little tiny bits on the coast like just where the track was red just as you went past and everything it was i thought that was ace yeah this is and this is amazing it's just 36 pieces to create these little tunnels and it's just done with four scaffolding pieces, creating a, a square, um, or the scaffolding, um, whatever those are called, and then the three scaffolding wooden pieces going around that. Like, that is just, that's so well done. Should I expect looks, to see them in your future parks, Michael? Maybe. I mean, that's, that's, <laughs> that's a possibility of doing something like that on, on my next true wooden coaster that I make. So that is, um, that, like, like you said, from a technical standpoint, just so well done all the little airtime hills it was perfectly smooth um really really good them tunnels give it so much characteristic as well they mm -hmm. make it so much so different it's like uh, yeah we've been on rides like these wooden coasters that have had tunnels before but you normally only get the one so to have put like multiple ones throughout mm -hmm. yeah great yeah job. you know it reminds me of um what's his name mr antonio did some of that on on his that park that looked kind of like alton towers a little bit yeah, that style yeah that's on my spotlight list i haven't got around to that one yet okay yeah valkyrie oh look at that view of that hyper coaster that is a nice view line Sight yeah line again yeah really cool oh wow i didn't realize we get this close to the coaster golly just really good interaction you, even more so here like kind of the safety aspect so maybe just use some of the don't die fencing mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and i know it's one of those where sometimes people might say well it looks ugly like i think that's what jasmine says sometimes like that fencing's so ugly and it's like it's realistic and if you're at a theme park you really don't actually notice it as much because you're so focused on the coaster like you don't notice that yeah hey there's this ugly fencing here um Gosh, and just the, even just a slight elevation change here is really well done. It's, yeah. it's not I anything do too love crazy. Elevation changes in parks. Yeah. Which, by the way, while we're moving to the next area, how is your current park project coming along? <laughs> Slowly. <laughs> You're keeping us all waiting, you, man. You know what <laughs> just I'm kidding. like. I, 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 I don't. I'm not so much with the building. I love the spotlighting, but the building aspect. I kind of. I'll have like little inspiration moments, and I'll be like, "Yes, I'll get into building," and then I'll build. I won't build again for months. So, <laughs> I love Planet Coaster. It's one of my favorite games ever. But for spotlighting, not for actual building. You're more of the builder than I am. Yeah, well, I, I think I speak. Keep knocking out pox. <laughs> I think I, doing spotlights. I think I speak for everybody though. Watch about my voice just really cracked. But I think I speak for everybody when I say that we are all loving your. Um, oh gosh, not Eden Gardens, Eden. Eden Springs. Eden Springs. There we go. So I'm just, yeah. yeah. And you know, when you release it, I might have to, might have to build a little park in there myself. 
Yes, so. yeah. I will get it done soon, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, maybe by the time this is out, it'll, it'll, it'll be done. Who knows? But now we're in like I, a I new... I wouldn't count your chickens if I were you. <laughs> I almost feel this, this should be looked at at night. This yes, idea. good point. Um, let's see. Futuristic and sci-fi. Yeah, you're talking about with kind of lighting and some stuff. Mm. Yeah, I like the use of these... Um, just those coaster support beams, pieces. They? No, they're coaster oh, they supports. Beams. Oh, right, okay. Because if you notice kind of near the top how they've kind of got those those markings, yeah. those yeah. are the coaster, the, the rectangular oh. coaster supports. And just adding it around, oh. it creates a really cool, unique kind of fencing. So that's that's one thing that's really cool. Golly, look at this this tunnel or this this kind of roof area here. Like, do you remember that park? I can't remember. Nova what it was World. Called. Nova World. That was yep. the one. Oh yeah. yeah I'm kind of getting vibes of that. Oh yeah, and look at the ah, oh, good gosh, I can just you know me. It's like I see a coaster, and that's what my eyes go to. But man, this is so well done. I love these lights. If you turn pan left, look at that light. How it comes mm -hmm. on. Like kind of with the basic shapes, and then with the light and uh, no, turn left. I'll turn left a bit more. That's right, Michael. But that'll do. Or left. Look at the light in front of you. So like oh, right. the base. No, no, no. Turn right. Straight in front of you now. Oh, right here. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, that is really cool. Yeah, that. Like so, like just using a basic. Is that a basic shapes? How has it got uh, the curve on it? I don't understand the curvature. What is that? Um, hold on. Let's see. Oh, it's a roof molding. Ah. Uh, so you're able nice. to get the different curves. Oh, right, that is that's... cool. That is so unique. An amazing light fixture. That's ace. Oh, actually, it actually did pop me out of flip cam mode. Okay, cool. So, without taking us back to the original spot. So, we'll stay in this mode right now. Um, oh my gosh, the lighting there. It, it almost gives you the illusion that this is kind of turning when this kind of started moving down as well. Yeah. Wow, this is awesome. Um, yeah, this kind of does give me those Nova World vibes. Now, this is really cool because, like... This is so different from his other builds. So this is an area where he's stepping out of his comfort zone, I feel like. 100%. I kind of almost regret what I said earlier. <laughs> because this is so different than anything we've seen before. Uh, this is incredible. And I love the chain link fence being used right there in color yeah. green. Wow. This is... And uh, they've got the roses on top as well. Mm -hmm. Like, so just... Uh, that is fantastic. Yeah, good call on looking at this area at night. Um, mm. Really good call. Wow, this is so cool. And, and then you got another nice one of those coverings. Sci-fi as well. We just don't see sci-fi ever. Now, I know a couple of people are working on sci-fi parks at the moment because I've been moaning that people don't do sci-fi parks. <laughs> so I know there's a couple of people working on them now. But yeah. it's just something Ooh. we don't see, is it? Yeah, and I like the roofing there being that sky mm. panel. Um yeah, honestly, man, sci-fi is one of the themes. I'm like, dude, I don't even know how to do that. Like, I just wouldn't know what to do with it. Um, yeah, I wouldn't know where to start. <laughs> yeah, and then yeah, I like how you've got the rocks down there, too. Like, the rubble. Um, wow, this is... in this station, look at this thing. This is so unique. I think, at the moment, this might be potentially one of my favorite areas of any of the three parks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's so different. So now we've got this. Um, it's a flying coaster. So let's go ahead and take a ride on the flying coaster.
so that was Project Ion, I believe. Okay, good. I actually pronounced something right that time. <laughs> um, so what are your thoughts, Maddie? Um, yeah, I think it was, once again, really good coaster. Maybe not quite as themed as maybe some of the other coasters that we've been on in the park. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I enjoyed it, to be honest. It's just did what it needed to. I haven't really got much else to say. I like that bit there. How it kind of like goes under the ground. I miss that as we were yes. actually on the ride. But yeah, that looks cool. I like that. And mm-hmm. I love the lighting around it. Maybe not the best ride of the park, but yeah, certainly a good experience and nice worthy addition to this area as well. So yeah, yeah. great job. So I got some positives that I really like and some... Uh, I don't want to say negatives, but it's not that they're negatives. But you know what I'm saying. First of all, I really love how smooth the coaster is and i like how smooth it is going in and out of that pretzel roll because sometimes that can be really difficult to kind of have it match the track how you want it to and then this part here is awesome kind of going through this part um first drops really well done i think it comes into the brake run way too fast so i think this needs to be extended before it turns um, because you're still going way too fast as you kind of turned and two things for me is I don't like seeing this first loop on it just because you would never actually see that on this coaster in real life. Um, and so I feel like there are other things that could have been done there to replace that, if that makes sense. Uh, but, I mean, overall, I think the, whole, the, the concept and idea of it, it does, other than that moment and then this part here, because I feel like if you're going to kind of overbank it, you might as well go ahead and do a full turn with it and have you kind of lay on the back, kind of like Galactica is at Alton Towers. Um but it really did kind of give the sensation for a lot of it that you were kind of in that flying motion, right? Low to the ground, really smooth, not really a lot of hills. Um, so, yeah, other than those couple couple things I said, really good ride. Yep, good job. Yeah, now we're just going to stay in this mode right now. And once again, we've got just this covering again along with this massive... I don't really want to say roof, because it's not necessarily a roof, but <laughs> whatever this would be called, this is really well done. And I just I love uh, this area. Look at that. You get these views of the oh, coaster going through. Oh, here we go. Amazing. Perfect timing. Wow, wow, that is... Wow. That's ace. <laughs> really, that really cool. Amazing. Really, really well done. Um, so we just got one more coaster to ride. Is this one is called Dark Matter? Love the signs. Oh, I love that sign. That's I love how he's done the R backwards. That's ace. Mm-hmm. Yeah, really well done. I'm looking there because I'm like, is that just? Oh, you know what? Wait, hold on. How? It's the it's the letters that he's used, but he's put them backwards. So like kind of the what the in-game ones, but he's turned them around so the so you see in the back of them. But why does the E? Is it just me or the E looks like it's? Oh, you know what? I was for some reason I'm like the E doesn't look backwards, but the E is definitely backwards. <laughs> but yeah, um, no, I mean it's it's I think it's really well done because <clears throat> when I saw this, my first thought was those are Mav Mav Fam's fours kind of uh, custom lettering, um, so it definitely makes it look different and. You know, it's like, why couldn't they give us those actual letters in the game that aren't lit up? That still bugs me. Well, they have. Just turned them out. <laughs> like he has. Yeah. Uh, look at this Q. Q covering. Once again, really nice Q line. Mm-hmm. I love his Q lines. They're not... Like, some of them are like have been more decorated than others, but they're just simple and effective. I just think they've all been great. They've all been unique. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They've all yeah. been cattle pan, mostly. Yeah. Look at their station. This is so different and strange, but really cool at the same time. And for anybody who's wondering, these pieces right here, I think, are just... Oh, that's actually just the iron scaffolding. Um, it's just like the scaffolding piece that he just put inside the wall to give it the look of just having those two um, kind of beams. So that looks really, really cool. And I like how there's the screens here. Um, and it looks like... Oh, okay, so it's just a wall sci-fi. It almost looked... I didn't realize that was a picture you could use. I almost thought it was like... Gosh, I can't man the camera. I thought like a sci-fi piece was kind of put into the <laughs> the screen a little bit to kind of give it that illusion. Um, but, man, this is awesome. So, yeah, what are your thoughts here on the station? 
Oh, I think it's amazing. Probably my favorite station of the entire park, actually. Yeah, I can agree with that. I think so it's so cool. So unique and original. He's used them pieces again. So the same ones that he used for the lights, he's mm -hmm. used them for the kind of like the roof as well. Here's what I like too is well, a couple things. We've got yeah. So we're using all the different styles, right? So essentially, you've got the the um, more narrow one or the greater incline, less incline than flat. And then you've got flat, and you kind of reverse it going this way. So I kind of like the pattern that's going there, um, and the color scheme. Really, really well done. Yeah. So yeah. let's go ahead and take a ride on coaster. So that might have been my favorite coaster in the park. It's definitely challenging the wooden coaster. And there are a couple things I want to point out on this real quick. First off, love the I-305 inspiration as it's got the, at the bottom of this big hill, kind of does the overbank turnaround and then comes back through the lift hill. Um, but then I'm going to go back to daytime because the custom supporting here is just so well done. And so if we actually delete the coaster for a second, you can see what the custom supports are, and these are just the scaffolding pieces. Um, oh my days! So if you like, delete that, and then there's a bottom piece as well, and then you can see kind of hiding the lights inside of those those scaffolding pieces, and it looks like those are the floodlights, and then these are the actual supports, and I love the, um, I love how it comes out and connects to the track right there. That's insane. Like, how good is that, Maddie? Like, how that that is amazing. In, that is probably some of the best custom supporting I've ever seen done in the game, actually. Mm -hmm. on, on console, at least, anyway. That's, yeah. That's amazing. And I know you mentioned it a second ago off camera that it's like every park we've done, he has done something so unique with the custom supporting. Now, this is the first time that he hasn't overlaid another coaster-type track to get the supports but this is this is insane mm -hmm. like this is really really cool so what are your thoughts of the actual ride um i feel like kind of this would almost be the main attraction of the mm -hmm. park like kind of this is going to be the one that's dominating all the adverts on tv and bringing people to the park this 100%. is going to be the one that, the, that they've spent the most money on and are going to advertise the most. For me personally, it wasn't my favorite ride of the park, but that isn't taking away from it. I think it was absolutely immaculately done. I think it was superb, really well smoothed throughout. Again, really nice design, like kind of with all the foliage around and going around the water. It was it was a top ride, but it just wasn't my favorite ride of the park. Because, and I think that's a testament actually to how good this park has been when a ride such as this isn't my favorite that yeah. i think that's just a testament to how good all the rides are it's just yeah brilliant well done yeah really well done and i mean just from a technical standpoint too this coaster is really really well done love the lighting with these little kind of tunnels you go through it's kind of like fury 325 in a way um as they kind of have the that aspect of it but it's even supported all the way down so you can see those pieces, those triangular pieces right there. Just everything's been thought out in this park. And so now as we kind of wrap this up, let me go back to daytime. Or we kind of see an overhead view at night. 
Yeah, you were totally right about checking out this area of the park at night. Definitely. It's incredible. Definitely really, really well done. Let's see. I hate when sometimes I'm trying to get to daytime without the HUD on the screen. and <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, we got the blue pathing there. That's different. Do you know what has been nice as well? I, I love the fact that both me and you have done the spotlight for every park so far together. So mm -hmm. to kind of collectively, we've been able to see the progression from for sure. Germany to Spain to France. Now, as a, as a technical standpoint, for me, this is the best of the three parks from a, techni from a technical point of view. From, you can see how much is learned. I think his rides in this one have, mm -hmm. have again, improved upon Spain. I'm, I'm not going to say that this is the best part because I like all three. I like what all three add individually, and I think there are certain aspects of each park that are amazing. So I think to compare all three is very, very difficult because they're all yeah. incredible in their own unique way. But for a coaster point of view, this is by far the best he's done by an absolute clear mile as well. Yeah, I, I agree on the coaster aspect. I do think this is, and it just shows you the progression. I mean, even though I said I had some, some things to say about this one, like it's still a really, really well done smooth coaster. The stuff I had to say was just coming from a realism aspect, right? Um, yeah. And like same thing when I talked about this one part of this coaster, but the coasters were just really smooth, really well done, really great sight lines. And I still think maybe in terms of like the my favorite park might be the first one. Um, they're all really? so amazing, yeah. but I, oh, I I just still love the layout of that one. Um, mm -hmm. I love the the steampunk area, like the coasters in that weren't quite as good as they are now. But I still just there's still just something about that park that just captures my mind. But <laughs> um, I think for now for now then, fellas, fourth park. I might almost like to see a smaller scale park, but with more detail, because you can see how good he is with the detailing. I wonder if a smaller park, but more detail might kind of like be a bit different for him next time. I mean, mm -hmm. what do you think? Yeah, I can agree with that. Um, you know, you can always, like for instance, you were saying he's only at 98% and he didn't even use the cheat to go over. So technically, if he'd wanted to, there's still about 25% that he could use to expand upon stuff. Um, but I think for me, it's more about like, I mean, smaller park definitely would work, but I think it's more about kind of seeing some more transfer tracks, some more realism throughout that kind of stuff. Um, some more custom fencing, little things like that, just kind of, that just really kind of make it stand out. And man, this building still is one of the, one of the favorites I've seen. That is so cool. It's a beautiful building. I don't know if that's going to be a workshop one or not. I think that's maybe something as well, potentially in the next park as well, because you look at that sci-fi area and you look how amazing it is. And the parks that we've done so far have been amazing. I'm not. I'm a little bit unsure why he would have felt the need to use workshop items or blueprints mm -hmm. because he is so good. Yeah. Marlon Fella is so incredibly talented. Look at that screen on top of there. I didn't see that. Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. How I was has wondering... he done that? Oh, it's on a trigger. Oh, wow. That completely oh distracted gosh. me from what I was saying. But, yeah, Now Then Fellow is such an incredible creator. I don't Wait. understand why he would have felt the need to use workshop items. So maybe, maybe steer clear of them because you don't need to. Yeah. Because you are so good. I'd love mm -hmm. to see a hundred percent originality so we can walk around without thinking, Oh, was that a workshop item? Because as good as that building is that you're pointing out, I'm thinking, is it his or is it a workshop? And I don't yep. want to think that. And one thing I want to point out too, because Jasmine and I've talked about doing a tutorial at some point on park layout. Um as you know, I it's trying to get better. Idea. Uh, trying to get better at this game, I have looked at a lot of theme parks, looked on Google Maps, all sorts of different stuff, just for inspiration. And one thing that I love that that now then Phila does with his layouts is he first of all has a main street. So there's like a there's like a beginning area of the park that floods all the guests up one direction, right? And then when you get to this point, there's three different ways for you to go. But if you look at every single one of the coasters. Every single one of the coasters is on an outskirt of the park, except for this one here. 
And the only reason this one isn't is because it's such a small, compact coaster that you're able to easily put a path around it and stuff. And so that's one thing you see in theme parks in real life is coasters are destination areas. They're not really in places where you just pass by it to go somewhere else, right? So they're kind of on the edges of the park because of the space they take up, especially your bigger coasters. And so these are really, really well laid out. Um, with the flat rides kind of being in the middle as kind of the, the ones you pass by on your way to the coasters, if that makes sense. Yep. Yeah. I think he's done that in all three parks as well, hasn't he? Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Well, um, any uh, closing thoughts, Matty? Uh, no, I don't think so. Um, I, I, once again, just top work. I'm really looking forward to... I'll see you about in about two months when we do the fourth <laughs> park. <laughs> <laughs> yep of course thank so, you for having me on a, as well of course always a pleasure always enjoy it of course man we definitely need to do more of these and ones that aren't just um explore land parks um <laughs> but no of course whenever i see a new explore land park come out i'm like all right gotta have maddie join me for this one um but thank you so much man for uh, uh joining me for this tour no you, thank you for having me been a pleasure as always. all right Thank you, everybody, for joining. And if you haven't done already, as I should have said in the beginning of the video, make sure to go sub to Iron Maddie's channel as he is the best Planko spotlighter on YouTube. Hands down, no question, best ever, ever to do it. So Michael's nose is growing now, just like Pinocchio's. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thank you all so much for watching. And if you stay till the end, um, God bless you because you had to put up with us for, for 50 minutes or so. So everybody Again. have a wonderful rest of your day. <laughs> Take care, everybody. Bye.